this video, we're going to take a look uh, or continuing look at bronsted Lowry acids and bases. And so we're going to get something called conjugate acid base pairs. And essentially, the conjugate acid base pairs are only different by a proton or a hydrogen. So here we've got acetic acid and this is acetate. Those are conjugate acid base pair where you've got the acetic acid is the acidic form and then the acetate ion is a base form. And their only difference is a proton and those are a conjugate acid base pair. Similarly, water is the basic form and hydronium is the acidic form and they also are a conjugate acid base pair. And so what you'll see is that in the reaction you're going to have a, two conjugate acid base pairs in each reaction. In the reactants you end up getting the proton donated over to the base and in the products, you get the proton donated to the base. So this is my acid, this is my base. The acid in the reactant has the conjugate base, sorry, has the conjugate base in the products, and that the base in the reactants will have the conjugate acid in the products. And so when we look at our data booklet, we're going to see a list of acid formula and its conjugate base. And so if I looked at phosphoric acid, that's the acidic form and dihydrogen phosphate is the basic form. And these are a conjugate acid base pair. If I have nitrous acid, nitrite is its conjugate base. And so we're going to need to locate things in this table. And this table is set up so that at the top we have our strongest acid down to our weakest acid. So it goes from strong to weak this way. This is our strongest base. up to our weakest base. And so this table is going to have a combination of the acidic formula and the conjugate base formula, which we will use when we're looking at the reactions. So um, in this reaction, we can see that there are conjugate acid base pairs. So this is my base. In the products, the conjugate acid of it will be present. So a conjugate acid base pair is this is, sorry, this is my base, and then my hydrogen sulfide is the conjugate acid of that base. So that's a pair. And then we have hydrogen carbonate, and we have carbonate. This is a conjugate acid base pair. This is an acid, this is the base. This is an acid, and this is a base. And for each of these, we're gonna be able to then later decide, does this favor the reactants or the products? And the way that we're going to do that is using our table here, I need to find the chemicals. So in the last one we had um, hydrogen carbonate and sulfide. Sulfide is, it's actually not even on here, so that won't work. But if I have the reactants, so if I had nitrous acid and I had hydrogen carbonate, because it's this, it'll be greater than 50% forward reaction. So it favors the products. But if I had instead, um, I had hydrogen sulfate and I had phosphoric acid, 
this would be less than 50% forward reaction and it favors the reactants. And so while we're using this table, we're going to have acid-base pairs and we are going to be able to predict the position of equilibrium. So if we looked at the next one, this is an acid, so this is the carbonic acid. Its conjugate base is going to be hydrogen carbonate, that's found in the products. Then I have hydroxide is the base in the reactants and water is the base in the products. And so I'm going to look at the two reactants here in the table and decide does that favor the reactants or does that favor the products. So I need to find my hydroxide on the table and my hydroxide is here and my hydrogen carbonate ion is here and because it's got that orientation where the left hand is above the right hand it is going to be greater than 50 percent forward reaction it favors the products so we're going to see that in our notes in a moment and um, that's what this table does it's saying if the strongest acid is above the strongest base it's greater than 50 percent forward reaction if the strongest acid is below the strongest base, it's going to be less than 50% forward reaction. This favors, if it's greater than forward 50%, it favors products. This favors reactants. And so there's a nice little summary table of what are the entities that you've got. And you need to pick the entities when you're deciding if it favors the reactants or the products. And this is our five step method where we're going to list all the entities. We're going to identify all possible acids and bases, pick the strongest acid and the strongest base, write the reaction, and then predict the position using our generalization that we outlined here. So we can do one of those questions here. We'll do question nine, where it's got hydrofluoric acid. Now hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. So it remains mostly hydrogen fluoride, right? So it says for weak acids like hydrogen fluoride, it remains in the acidic form. So it's hydrogen fluoride and it's got aqueous sodium sulfate. So sodium ions are present, sulfate, ions are present and water is present. Now I need to find each of those entities in the data booklet. This is going to be an acid. This is going to be a spectator. The sodium is a spectator. Sulfate is a base and water is an acid or a base. And so I need to go find those in the data booklet and um, locate them to be able to decide if the reaction favors the products or the reactants. So sulfate is found way up he here. So sulfate is a base, water is a base, water is a reactant, and hydrofluoric acid is the other acid. And so since the acid and base are like this, this reaction that we've got here, we're going to have hydrofluoric acid is going to react, because it's our strongest acid, is going to react with the strongest base. We're going to get an equilibrium position and we're going to get hydrogen sulfate plus fluoride ions. And so I'm going to just go back to the table in a second. And you're going to see that the hydrofluoric acid is becoming fluoride, right? And so this is in the reactants. This is what I'm going to write in the products. And then sulfate ion is my base, so it's becoming 
its conjugate acid. So this is in my reactants and this is in my products. And because the strongest acid is below my strongest base, it's going to be less than 50% forward reaction. So this is less than 50% forward reaction, and it favors the reactants. Now, I'd like to do question 10. This is getting to be a pretty long video, but I want to list the entities for question 10 because that's really important. Here, we've got a strong acid, which is perchloric acid. Perchloric acid, because it is a strong acid, is going to be its ions. So for any strong acid, for strong acids, it makes the hydronium ion and the conjugate base. And so because it's perchloric acid, it makes hydronium ion and perchlorate ion. And then it reacts quantitatively with strong bases like sodium hydroxide. So I've got sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Water is also present. So water is an acid or a base. Hydroxide is a base. Sodium is a spectator. Perchlorate is a base. And hydronium is an acid. If I go back to my data booklet, my strongest acid is going to be hydronium. My strongest base is hydroxide. So I get hydronium plus hydroxide are going to make two water molecules. Um, and this is quantitative, so it's a 100% forward reaction, and it tells us that here that it's quantitative reaction. So try doing the rest of those questions, and we'll catch up with you in topic 16.3.